Hi, I'm going to show you how to develop FizzBuzz in a test-driven development way. So FizzBuzz is apparently a game, I took this from Wikipedia, and um, it's about, a, it's, it's a bit of a counting game that people do when they are um, having, a, having beer or whatever. So the rules are as follows, you say, uh, it's just you, every person counts one after another, the first person says one, the second person says two, and then if a number is divisible by three, you say fizz instead of a number. The next person says four. Then if a number is divisible by five, you say buzz instead of a number. Um, so after that comes six again, which is divisible by three, so you say fizz. Uh, onward, onward, fizz, buzz. And then for 15, which is both divisible by three and five, you say both fizz and buzz in that order. So what I'm going to do is um, is to uh, write our first test. So the, the function, usually you would something like get fizzbuzz, because it's a nonsense game, I'm going to call the function fizzbuzz. And what I expect is for, uh, for one, that uh, if I call my fizzbuzz function for the number one, um, it should not give me an error. It should just return something and I don't care what for now. So for that I'm going to use the test that library, library test that. And I expect no error message, I expect silence when I call fizzbuzz with one. So this is the first step in test driven development to break the code. So if I run this test, it says uh, it can't find the function, function fizzbuzz, which is very reasonable because it didn't write it yet. So we've broken the code and now we're going to fix the code using minimal effort. So I'm going to write a function just like this without any effort. Let's see if it already passes. No, it does not because it needs an argument. So I'm going to add the function argument. Damn, done, did it. So the next thing I want is, so um, I want that if I put in one, that the output should be equal to the number one as a string. Because fizzbuzz will return a word because it can return like the number or the word fizz or the word biz, uh, buzz. So uh, this is a test that uh, fails. All right, so let's fix that. So um, we're just going to return x, and that doesn't work, so we need to convert it to a string as string. Oh, that's probably as character. So we're going to return x as a character. Let's see if that works. Works! Great! So now we need to write, so now we should clean up or push it to GitHub or um, uh, uh, publish our package. So let's see if we can find our first test that breaks. So two, that doesn't, that, that works fine, so we don't need to add it. But for a three, we expect the word fizz. Um, that doesn't work, so time to add that. So if x is divisible by three, that means if you do a modulo, and that means if the remainder by three equals zero, then the function should return uh, fizz, I guess. Fizz, yes. Return, return fizz. Fizz with a capital F. Let's see if this works. That works brilliantly. So our old tests work, and um, I'm going to check for more. So for the number four. That doesn't, uh, that gives a four, that's great. So probably the new one is uh, for five to return buzz. So let's see if this test fails because for five it now returns a five. So now we're going to add this code. So I'm going to put this on one line. So if it's divisible by five, you should return buzz. So let's see if it works. Yes, we fixed this as well. So now we can continue. I predict that this will work until 15 because 15 should produce fizz buzz. And that's a test that fails. 
So um, let's add this code in the simplest way possible. Um, by just doing an AND statement. I'm not do doing any, anything fancy, because why would I? As long as all tests pass, I'm very happy. And indeed, I again fixed all the tests. So you could argue I'm done now already, um, but I would disagree with that, because I predict some error message. For example, so I'm going to expect an error message here, um, when I call fizzbuzz with the word nonsense I expect an error message something like X must be a number I'm going to re re actually um, uh, just uh, change the order a bit I feel this is more readable um, I think I should also have done that here but it's a bit of a detail but uh, from now on I'll stick to this form and maybe I'll clean this up one day all right, so I expect an error message here uh, that is helpful. So the user of my function now gets this unhelpful error message. It says that non-argument, non-numeric argument to binary operator, which is very unclear for anyone using my function. I expect the error message must be x must be a number. That doesn't work, so I broke the test. So let's fix this as well. Um, so x must be a, a number. So for uh, so for that, the use is numeric. If it's not numeric, then stop. Um, yeah, well, I, li I like these curly braces. Uh, but you can remove them if it's just one uh, statement. And, and I want to say, all right, x must be a number. So let's see if all tests shall pass. Damn, that works great. So the next step would be, like, what should you do? if the user puts in two numbers. So let's say one and two. So this should return one and two, but let's say for three and five, it should return fizz and buzz. So it should return two values. And um, I feel, um, so you could argue that we should factorize this, that this should return fizz and buzz. So it should return two values for three and fizz and five and buzz. In this case, I opt for using for allowing only one number. So my function does only one number. Um, so if I want to use a factorized version of this, perhaps I would, would rename it to fizzbuzzes, uh, to imply the plural in English. But already this is a nonsense function name, so uh, anyways. But I, oh, I, I, have the, I choose to support only one exact number, that my function does only exactly one thing perfectly right. So this test fails, and actually it gives a very cryptic error message, the conditions length one and over. So that's not helpful to a user, it wants to know that it should use exactly one number. So I'm going to add that as well. So if the length of x is different than one, return x must be one number. So let's run that, all the tests pass and done, this is great. So there are also some, or are also some um, corner cases that you may want to think about. For example, what should zero do? So I feel that uh, for if I do fizzbuzz on a zero, I think it should give an error, like x must be um, at least one. x must be at least one. So I feel this should be an error message is not the current error message, so let's add that as well. So if x is less than one, then copy the error message. x must be at least one. Uh, so um, that means it's now checking there. So let's see if all the older tests still pass. Yes, that works, and also the new test passes. That's great. So let's see what needs to be done. Yeah, let's check for some weird values. So we've checked for the for nonsense, which is a string. But let's also ch try out the corner cases in R. For example, null is one. That works fine. And A also works fine. Um, so infinity, for example, is also some people that are forgotten. 
So if you use fizzbuzz on infinite, then I expect the error that x must be a finite number. So this test fails. Uh, it says that it's, uh, it now returns missing value where true false is needed, which is completely unhelpful to a user. So let's add this into the mix as well. Um, probably needs to be here above. If is infinite. So if x is infinite, x must be a finite number. So let's see if all the tests still work. Bam, so I broke the code. I fixed it. That's great. Let's check for minus infinity. Uh, no, that passes, so I can remove that test safely. So now I'm out of ideas how to break my function. Um, so I feel that I, I, so I, I think it's reasonable now for me to check in the function, to publish it on GitHub, uh, because all the tests are in place. If someone finds a bug in my code, uh, that that's just fine. He or she can add an, a, a test that fails, uh, that convinces me that I should probably that I should modify my code. And so that's uh, so that's very helpful in communicating my errors. Um, of course, I should put it in a package in the end to publish it on CRAN, add some documentation perhaps. Also check for style using the linter package. Um, but as far as I think, I can publish this and sleep well. Like uh, I, I have no ideas anymore how to break my code. So here I've showed you how to develop the Fizzbuzz function in a test-driven development way. Um, I um, hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you a very good day. Bye.